Well, hello, good evening. We're here at Faith Builders Family Church. I want to have a shout out to all of the members of Faith Builders Family Church here in Banning. And uh, you are the most amazing people, and I love you, and it's hard not to just hug you and smile at you, and, and uh, all of us getting together, love it. And all of you out there in Facebook land, hello, how are you doing? Hope that you're coping real well with everything, and uh, I know you, you, you know, even if you don't know us, if there's some way we can help you, if we can, we will. Amen. That's one of the most amazing things that's happening is, is everybody, you know, calling each other and seeing how you're doing and you need anything. And, and, and that's precious, you know. And uh, if God puts someone on your heart, give them a call. Hey, let me tell you something, especially if you're a pastor or if for anybody, but mainly pastors. But if you have guest speakers that you usually have in and they're evangelists and, and that's what, you know, their, their source of... of living and money is coming from traveling and they can't travel now, why don't you send them a, a love offering? Send them something. Hallelujah. Praise God. We've been doing that and, and uh, it, it's been a great thing. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, I want to talk to you tonight about let your light shine. Come on now. Do you have a light? This big light of mine, <laughs> this huge light of mine, not a little one. It's a big one. So we're going to let that light shine. If you have your Bibles with you, I want you to turn with me to Mark 4 and verse 21. Mark 4, 21. And it says, And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid. Hello? Nothing hid. <laughs> that should... Shake people has got secrets. <laughs> Which shall not be manifested, neither was there anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. He says, is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under bread bed? You know, the candle, and we'll get to it in, in Proverbs 20, you can, whether you turn there or not, in 27 it says, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly, and that's talking about the heart or the subconscious. He says, mercy and truth preserve the king, and his throne is upheld by mercy. All right? And so Jesus is the king of kings. His throne is upheld by mercy. And it's not all the things that we get right and all the obedience and, and, and doing everything just perfect and everything that gets us something from God. It's his mercy that says that he will never count anything wrong against us no matter what. And it's His grace that works in us that enables us to accomplish what we can't naturally accomplish or do. So it is the grace of God. If you look at Jesus in the Gospels, everywhere He went, the first thing that went was mercy or compassion, then it was followed by grace. So grace follows mercy and compassion. So if you want to see grace work more in your life, then start being more compassionate, have mercy. Let mercy come out. Amen. Get away from the law. <laughs> but a candle, which is, is uh, the spirit of man, is, wasn't created to put under a bushel or under a bed. Now, a bushel, to me, signifies a natural measurement, meaning the natural world that kind of justifies where you are on the social ladder, on the ministry ladder, you know, if, if you've got a huge church, you know, then you're way up there in the, in, in, in the heart of God stuff, you know, but if you've got a little church, then, you know, keep believing God, you know, I mean, we even need little churches too, you know, and, and that's not right, because we're all equal in the eyes of our Father, no matter what it is we're doing. And whatever you're doing, even if you're holding meetings in, in foreign countries and thousands and thousands are coming to the Lord, you know, the only way any of us can do anything is through the grace of God. And what came first? Mercy. You got it. In other words, it's not about you. But when you start thinking that God's response to me is going to be based on what I'm doing for Him, then you're missing the whole thing. You know, you're hiding your, your candle under a basket. So it's not about the, the natural measurements that go on. It says, or you put it under a bed. 
Well, you know what? Some of you probably uh, are getting up a little later than normal. <laughs> and what is a bed? A bed is, is a place where, where you sleep and you rest. Well, a lot of people are going to sleep in the things of God when this is a time to revive. This is a time to wake up and shine. Come on now, say it. Wake up and shine. Praise God. Amen. And, and we want our light to shine big. We want it to go out all over the place, praise God. And there's, there's a common prayer right now going on all over the world, and that is for this virus to stop. Well, what if it just falls dead tonight everywhere in the world? Well, everyone will get excited, but in a few days, most people will forget what we went through. Why? Because the heart is hard or callous toward God. You're not actively serving Him and worshiping Him and spending time with Him. So it won't be long before it'll just become an event in the past and you'll move on to, to your normal way of life. This is a time that we can change. God didn't send this virus, but in spite of it, we can grow. We can, we can grow closer to God. We can begin to pray for one another. We can get into the Word. We can spend time there. Hallelujah. Let's turn this into a good thing. Amen. We're not imprisoned. You're just in a place where you can spend more time with God. Amen. So our spirit man is God's candle. What's a candle for? It's to illuminate. It's to see things. Right? And so God uses us to look into this world. Hallelujah. You see, we are the body of Christ. The body that he has in the world. And what God wants to do, he wants to do through us. And yet most Christians are praying for God to do something separate from them. And he said, no, I chose you. So you start doing what needs to be done. Praise God. Start praying for your neighbors. Start praying for your relatives, your friends. Start boldly confessing no virus, no sickness, no plague will come nigh my house or my loved ones or my relatives, praise God. In Psalm 18 and verse 28, it says, For thou will light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Okay, who lit your candle? You know, who flicked your bick? <laughs> right? Who lit your candle? Well, it was the Holy Spirit. It was God that lit you up with the glory of God. Amen. And so that's what God is using to search is His love and compassion that He showed upon us when we opened our heart and said, Jesus, I believe in you. Come into my heart and be my Lord, be my God. <clears throat> Amen. And if you've never done it, you can do it right now. It's so, so simple. Jesus, I believe in you. Come into my heart and be my Lord and be my God. I want to spend eternity with you. Bam. Whoa, you just got your candle lit. <laughs> Praise God. Now look at this. He says, For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God I have leaped over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to those that trust in him. For who is God save the Lord? Or who is a rock save our God? It is God that girdeth me with strength, and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet, and setteth me upon high places. What did he say? He said, I'm doing it. It's not you. You don't get higher up the mountain because you're doing things for God. You know, regardless of what your ministry, your personal life is accomplishing, God put you up there because of Jesus Christ. And Jesus sits on the top of the mountain. He's the top of the hill. Amen. And we're seated in him. So there's nothing humanly impossible that anybody can do that'll place them above anybody else. We are equal with Christ in the eyes of the Father because of the blood that was shed. And we've accepted and received that made us righteous. Say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. It's all about righteousness. Now look at this. In Luke 11, what? verse 33. Give me just a couple seconds to get there. In Luke 11, verse 33. It says, No man, 
And that word man there is it, it, just person, no human being. Okay, how many of you are part of that? No human being, yeah? It includes you. <laughs> no human being, when he has lighted a candle, puts it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick. Why? That they which come in may see the light. See, it's not given to us to hide our light. It's given to us to let that light shine, all right? And, and if, if you're kind of like a seeker-friendly person, you know, you need to trim the wick and, and turn it up and become a little more bright. We need to show the world we're not ashamed of Jesus Christ. We need to show the whole world that we don't care what you think, you know? God didn't put us in this world to be politically correct. He put us in this world to stand out and voice who God is. We're part of the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. We were talking the other day and it says, well, what, you know, some of the things that are coming up are going to be way worse than this virus thing. What's going to happen when they're going to hunt you down like dogs trying to put 666 on you, right? What if they round you up as a Christian, lined you up and you got to guillotine up there that they're going to chop people's heads up. Are you going to fight to be the first in the line? You know? Or are you going to sleep back, you know, into the back and hide, you know? Man, no, just run at it. <laughs> That's the quickest way to meet Jesus. Hallelujah. It's awesome. You know, I had a dream once, and, and this very thing was, was, was happening, and, 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 and I just said, no, Jesus, and, and I ran to everyone else, with, and we were all trying to be first to get to the guillotine. And we were all running up on them, and they got scared and ran off. <laughs> so we're standing around saying, what do we do now? Well, let's go preach. <laughs> Isn't that what the disciples did? Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, get excited. <laughs> Hallelujah. You stoked that fire. Amen. Now look at this. Verse 30 says, "For As for God, His way is perfect. His way is what? Perfect. Say it. Perfect. His way is perfect. You know, one of the worst things you can do is, is be a perfectionist. Because your perfection isn't going to get you where God wants to take you. You've got to yield yourself and realize that God's perfect. His word's perfect. And it's the only thing that's perfect. He says the word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to them that trust in Him. Amen. And he says that, that we've come into a place of safety, defense. He's our defender. He's our defender. Amen. I love a song. <clears throat> you, you, you know that was that was uh, written some time ago. It's it's you know, God is my defender. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at that. We can be we can be at peace. We can be at peace. All right. In Luke eleven. Or, or um, excuse me, Second Corinthians chapter four. It says, in verse six says, "For God who commanded, come on, let's just stop there just to say, for God who did what, commanded, God commanded something. Commandments of God are pure, true, and righteous altogether." Now let's see what He commanded. He commanded light to shine out of darkness. Now just think about that for a minute. He commanded light to shine out of darkness. You didn't know there was light in the dark, huh? <laughs> that was his first act there when he, in creation there. It says when he created the, the earth and everything, it says that he said, light me. And then he separated the light from the darkness. But it wasn't until the fourth day that he made the sun and the stars and the moon. So there's some kind of light that came first to the earth. And then he separated it. And what I believe it is, Paul picked it up in Corinthians, and he says there's a natural wisdom, and there's a spiritual wisdom. And he separated it. And a lot of times, we just exercise doubt and fear and call it wisdom. Well, you got to walk by wisdom, brother. Well, that means walk by the Word of God. There is no wisdom outside of Christ. There is no wisdom outside of the Word of God. What does the Word of God say? I will boldly say that he is my redeemer, my God. Amen? To my own hurt. 
Hallelujah. Now look at this. He says, and he has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge. Now, woo, come on, let's go back. To give the light, we're going to find out what this light is. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. There's knowledge, right? But without wisdom, knowledge doesn't do much. You got to know what to do with what you know. Praise God. To do it right. Okay? He says, but we have this treasure. Treasure. We have a treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God, not us. What is he saying? He's saying inside you right now is the glory of God, the wisdom of God, the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, all authority and power in heaven and earth residing and sitting right there inside you waiting to climb up and find its way out your mouth, riding on the streams of faith and what you believe that Jesus Christ has done for you right now. And see, you're not going to get any of that faith watching secular news. I don't care how fair and balanced they say it is. It's going to come from the Word of God. It's going to come by locking yourself up, looking at how much God loves you, looking at what God has done for you, looking at everything that has been accomplished in your life, and just saying, I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. You know, the arrow at night, the terror of the plague. Why? Because my God, my God, would not suffer any harm to come unto me. And you know, if you believe that, you accept it, you receive it, you'll see it. It'll be right there. There's people, there's, there's testimonies that are going to come out all over the place of how God delivered people. I read one just the other day. It's somebody that was infected with, with COVID-19 and, and uh, I guess on their deathbed or something. And he says, all of a sudden, it's like, like God breathed into his lungs. He come out of there and he's good. <laughs> good to go. Praise God. You see, that's what we need, right? It isn't trying to shield yourself out of fear of not being contaminated. It's assuring yourself that no matter what, God is your source, your help, and your healing. Amen? Praise God. Now look at this. Proverbs 4, verse 23. He says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues, the forces, the boundaries of life. Your whole boundary of your life is in your heart. It's not in your ability to stay away from something that's contagious. It's bound up in your heart. That's where it is. And see how the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so you can see what's in your heart by just listening to yourself talk. Right? And so now is the best time there is to get in and begin to meditate and mull around and speak the word of God. Hallelujah. Sing songs. There's some great songs out there. He says, put away from you the, the forward mouth and the perverse lips. Let thine eyes look right on. And let thy eyelids look straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Turn not to the right nor to the left and remove yourself from evil. The word evil really is natural, the natural things. Get your feet out of the natural things. Don't look to man to be your savior. Don't look to the government to be your savior. It's God. God is our savior. Amen? Now look at this. In verse 20, in Proverbs 23, 7, it says, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What is he saying? He's saying whatever you're building up in the abundance, if fear is in there, 
Don't call it wisdom. Call it what it is. It's fear. You need to break it. Not because of COVID-19, but because of something else that will get you down the line somewhere. You need to break it right now. Fear is like yeast. It'll just keep moving until it moves through your whole heart. That's what Jesus said. All right? And so you don't just have a little bit of fear in this area and a little bit of fear in that area. You know, it'll come in and affect your whole walk with God. So you need to get it out. You know, it says perfect love cast out fear. Wherever fear is, love is not perfect. And we need to accept the perfect love of God in our heart. No one wants to die and go to heaven now. We don't want to go before our time. But you know what? We're not going to. That's what you need to be determined about. And not going to. You know, in Mark 4, <clears throat> verse 23, it says, If any man hath ears to hear, let him hear. Can you imagine Jesus out there looking at the crowd saying, Is there anybody out here that's got ears? <laughs> well, they all had ears. <laughs> You know, unless they all had long hair. I mean, he could see it. So he wasn't talking about these things. He was talking about the ears of the heart or the understanding. He said, open the ears of your understanding and listen to what I'm saying. If you grasp it, it'll be life to you. If you don't, then you're going to have to do the best you can. He says, and he said unto them, take heed what you hear. For with what measure you meet, in other words, what importance you put to it, is what's going to be delivered back to you. Stay off the internet looking for news about COVID-19. It shall be measured unto you, and you that hear it shall more be given. For he that hath to him shall be given, and he that hath not from him shall take away even what he has. What is he saying? He's saying what well, a little bit of faith and trust and reliance you have in there is going to be robbed. It's going to be stolen because of what's going on now. So when you stand up to it and say, I'll not fear you, you know, yes, do what they ask. Practice your social distancing and different things, you know, that's fine. But you know what? That isn't what's going to put a stop to this virus. What's going to put a stop to this virus is the blood of Christ and the testimony of Jesus and the saints that agree with it and are speaking it right now. Praise God. So let's do that right now. Wherever you are, wherever you are, just say this. Lord Jesus... You bore the stripes. Your blood is righteous. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we command this virus to die and dissipate and be no more. And Lord, we ask you, by your Spirit, to bring wisdom to those that are looking for the cure, that they may get it and it may be simple and it will work wonderfully. Hallelujah. And this, God return the financial status of all nations that were affected under this. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.